Hello everyone, my name is Amy, this is the Opinionated Woman, and welcome to my Queer Lit Readathon vlog! This is my first proper readathon that I'm actually vlogging in, which is very exciting. I feel like I'm part of the booktube community. Um, yeah, excuse the hair, I dried it, slicked back, and now every time I brush it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to pop on here and tell you what I'm starting to read. So this is the bingo board. Um, you're allowed to double up on books, so I'm going to try and see how many of these I can cross off, which is exciting. I've got it in my bullet journal. I really want to colour them in. <laughs> so for the vintage prompt, I have already started, but I'm going to be finishing this week The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. The other story is not necessarily queer, but I mean, it's Oscar Wilde. He is the granddaddy of uh, queer queer writers so I'm getting into this it's really good so far it's written so beautifully you can tell he's a playwright I read the importance of being earnest but um, I think I mentioned that in my last vlog um, but obviously this is his only novel and the way the men talk about each other is quite homoerotic <laughs> like the way they touch hands you know and they they emphasize that touching of hands I'm like whoa <laughs> so yeah I'm really enjoying that one then on audio I've got like 40 minutes left of my audiobook from last week that I'm just going to finish off then I'm picking up All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson I've been waiting for Pride to pick up this book. This has been like my number one audiobook of Pride besides Loveless that I wanted to pick up. Um, this will hit the underrepresented identity because it's their non-binary um, and the memoir because this is a set of uh, essays of, uh, yeah, a memoir of essays of Jordan Johnson's experience, which I'm super excited to get into. On audio, I'm also going to be picking up um, Halsey's poetry collection, um, which is called I Would Leave Me If I Could. If I, could. Um, I watch a lot of Rachel Oates, and she talks about um, like uh, celebrity poetry, and most of it's really bad. She's not even a Halsey fan, and she really liked Halsey's poetry. And I love Halsey's songwriting, because uh, they are bipolar like me and their album Manic like really hit me because it like I got to identify myself in her lyrics so much um which is really great so that will fit the, so All Boys Aren't Blue will fit the memoir prompt as well as contributing to the 40% BIPOC authors because I'm making sure this pride to read like as diversely as possible and it's so good it's making my reading so fucking pleasant <laughs> Like just seeing things from different perspectives in an intersectional way. Intersectional. That's another one <laughs> that All Boys on Blue will um, will hit, as well as an underrepresented identity. But I'm going to have George and Halsey hold hands because they are both non-binary. <clears throat> so that will be the identity that uh, is underrepresented. And then the poetry will be the shorter than the novel prompt. So I'm super excited to read that. I thought I was going to have to read it on ebook. Um, which I was a bit worried about. I don't read a lot of poetry and I think the only like stuff in verse that I've read uh, recently is The Poet X uh, by Elizabeth Azevedo and that was read to me and I looked on Scribd yesterday and Halsey's Poetry is an audiobook read by her and oh my god I love a person with a husky voice and god damn does Halsey have a husky as hell voice. Oh what a fox, what a fox. So I'm going to be listening to their poetry at the same time um, so yeah, I'm super excited. Queer Lit Readathon. Let's go. Okay, so I am listening to All Boys on Blue. It's really your, your there boy with words, eh? <laughs> um, they were talking about, um, feeling, feeling different as a child, um, and now growing up and knowing that being different is okay and that it's not something that's wrong with with you it's something that's wrong with your environment and i was brought up in a very catholic school so a very very heteronormative environment so that was obviously the environment that um sort of skewed me into you know being uh thinking i was a straight for so long um <laughs> i've also been thinking about like queer icons that I've had in my life from when I was a child and trying to remember like my first exposure to it and I realized it's Stephen Fry. I've watched Stephen Fry in like Fry and Laurie, Bertie Wooster, um, you know, Blackadder since I was a child 
And I think he's the first, and I've read his books, and he was the first like art man that I ever, um, or art person that I ever sort of um, was aware of, I think. And because he's read the Harry Potter series, we had, used to have them on cassette tape, and I used to listen to them all the time, and like I used to have to listen to an audiobook to go to sleep. So I would play the audiobook, and it would be Stephen Fry reading it. <laughs> like, told me a, a bedtime story as I fell asleep every day. It was quite cool, quite cool to think of. And then author-wise, probably Jacqueline Wilson, but she wasn't out then. But now I know why I connected with her, I guess. <laughs> Crazy. Hello everyone, just checking in. It's Monday. It's Monday, um, I am tired, I had crazy dreams last night, not the worst dreams, but just very, very busy. I remember in my dream being like, just chill, just sit down and chill, but I, obviously it was a dream so I couldn't. Um, I am still reading Picture Dorian Gray, I've been getting into the old, uh, to all the boys, to all the boys aren't blue, uh, to all boys aren't blue, and um, it's, it's fucking great so far, I mean I'm only like, I mean it's quite short, I'm, I'm only like an hour into it, but it's really good so far. Um, I've been wanting to read this book for so long. Uh, and then I, so th the the Pink Line book, which I'm not reading for Queer Lit Readathon, but I'm just reading it throughout um, Pride Month. Uh, in between each uh, story about particular people, he goes into a part of queer history, so like about um, like the politics of um, queer history in different places. And there's literally like a quote from a Ugandan president where he's like, oh, I'm so sorry that the West, this is a paraphrase, uh, live the way you go, you do, but like we don't live that way. And that was like when he was passing his anti-gay laws. Um, so yeah, just showing different countries and how different countries deal with LGBTQ issues and things like that. And I read a, the last person I read about, his name was Michael. Um, he is a, I know he never refers to himself as trans, someone else refers to him as trans, but he's definitely a gay boy from uh, Uganda, and in Uganda uh, being gay is very, very legal, um, and you can get beaten up for just looking feminine, and people escape from Uganda through into Kenya, but Kenya's laws are not here not that much better, like they are, well, well their laws are better, but the actual social environment so that he is not not any better so if he goes out um looking too feminine like he got beaten up and things like that which is so sad like also hearing it from my own continent because south africa is um like the most progressive when it comes to these things but um yeah the rest of the continent is very very far behind so um it's quite sad it's really fucking sad <laughs> it's not just quite sad um yeah, I just thought I'd better check in. I've been feeling a bit floopy today. Um, seeing my psychiatrist today, so hopefully um, I can sort out my tics a little bit more and you change my meds and um, yeah. Hello, this might be a very weird angle, but I am very lazy to get my tripod because I want to film some exercise as that I'm going to do now. Um, a bit of mad fit exercises. Oh my God, that woman, that woman, first of all, Damn, that ass. <laughs> In the most respectful way possible. Like, she's a dancer and she does fitness for a living. Like, she's supposed to have a fantastic bootay. And she has a, oh, fantastic bootay. Um, I think, actually, I'm going to do booty booty workout today. Yeah, but yo, she makes me sweat. Jesus. Um, but I wanted to come in before I did that and update you. I am halfway through the picture of Dorian Gray. I really, really love it. Oscar Wilde's writing. Oh my God, I wish he wrote more novels. I really, really wish he wrote more novels because this is so amazing. And I've always been someone who really liked an unlikable main character. Like it's something that it, I think it's a definitely a level hate, but I love, I love an unlovable, an unlikable main character. And Dorian is definitely that. And I really love how he has um, two different friends. So he's got Basil, Basil Hallward, who is the painter that painted the portrait that is sort of degrading as his morals degrade. That's like a better way of putting it. It's not that he, it's degrading as he ages, it's degrading as he makes questionable choices and becomes ugly on the inside and it's showing on the portrait. So he's got Basil, um, who painted it, who is a much 
more of like a positive influence on him I suppose so he's very much more like yeah, it, I can't think of any other way to say it, that he's the positive influence. But then there's Lord Harry, who's also Basil's friend, who introduced him to Dorian. And Basil is a terrible influence. He is definitely very morally questionable. And he feeds the bad parts of Dorian. So, uh, what is the word? In, incessantly, maybe? Um he just he just definitely brings out the bad sides of Dorian and that's really interesting seeing the contrast between the two but yeah I'm really enjoying it so hopefully it won't take me too much longer and I can get at least one more book in for my Quillet Readathon um Kathy whose name I can't pr try hard try hard is that how you pronounce her name um one of the original hosts of the Quillet Readathon commented on one of my videos which was super freaking nice um saying that uh you know thank you for participating and stuff like that so that's really sweet anyway okay exercise time So I realized that I am actually reading something right now that I can definitely like finish reading today because um, it's super quick but it could fall under the prompt for all the question marks so I could put that as being like a non-fiction or a um, like important um, theoretical work I suppose that is what I can make it because I do what I want because um, right now I am reading um, Compulsory Heterosexuality and the Lesbian Experience for a blog post um, and <laughs> I just made an Instagram story talking about how <laughs> she was talking about um, uh, male identification and how women prioritize um, men in a lot of situations and <laughs> she said the, the, just the one phrase a penis with a life of its own now I have this really creepy, cartoony image of this little penis bouncing around in its ball with this little face on the bell end. <laughs> Just tickled, tickled my funny bone. So I am definitely going to be able to fill up this row. And then I think I will also be able to fill up this row, which would be cool. But then I just also want to see which ones like that I can completely cover just, just for a bit of a... Um, uh, challenge um, so yeah I think compet can definitely go in here as a um, yeah a theoretical work that um, is very important to us in the woman loving woman community
Okay, I'm coming in for another check-in. As you saw, my board got a lot more filled up. Um, I just finished Old Boys on Blue by George M. Johnson. It was really good. I actually, I, I kind of misunderstood what it was. Like, I knew it was a memoir, I knew it was in essays, but I thought that it included his, uh, well, the thing is, in the book, he is saying he, and he's calling himself a boy and stuff, but now I look at his social medias, and it's they them, so it's their social medias. So this is a, what he calls at the end, a YA coming of age. And it just really goes through um, what it's like to be a queer boy in America, what it's like to be a black boy in America, and what it's like to be a queer black boy in America. Like in that moment in time, a queer black person in America. And the complexities of it, and his family and their relationship, which is so beautiful. His family relationships were so, uh, they were so soft and, and like a hug. Um, sorry, I show my neurodiversity when I say stuff like that. I can only describe how this book feels to me, you know? Um, but I really enjoyed it. There were some scenes that were so hard to listen to. I think if I was reading it, I would have like had to put it down for a while and be like, <sighs> but it's like an important thing to read. Um, but it was, yeah, just like trigger warnings for sexual assault. Um, and it, yeah, but it was, it was really, really great. I'm glad I picked it up. So that hits memoir. It also hits intersectional because he's black and queer. Um, and they are black and queer and they're non-binary. Um, this is also a book that was highly recommended, highly recommended, but particularly by Jesse from Bow Ties and Books. And then all of the books that I will be reading <laughs> this week are not set on my continent because I don't think I have, oh, I've got no African ones. If anybody knows of some really good, like Africa based queer books, please tell me. Pet. No, I didn't read Pet for this. Never mind. <laughs> I do have African stuff in my TBR, just not in this one. Um, sorry, I had a little bit of a, a um, brain check out. I'm sorry, mental health. Um, anyway, so the next one that I am going to read is I Would Have Left Me If I Could by Halsey. Um, and that's a poetry collection, so that's going to be shorter than a novel. And Halsey is non-binary, so that's M-spec, so you're attracted to multiple different, uh, like, genders. Um, and it will also hit underrepresented identity because Halsey is non-binary. So, pew, 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 all in a cute one-hour little poetry book, and I've been trying to read more poetry, so I'm actually excited to listen to it. And, oh, it's, it's on audio, and oh my god, do I love a person with a husky voice. Oh my god. <laughs> a, a beautiful husky voice, they them. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna listen to that and probably do some gardening or something aesthetic like that. Gardening while listening to poetry, that sounds pretty cool. Okay, let's do that. God, I've listened to the first couple of sentences. Their voice, their voice. Oh my god, it's so sexy. I love them so much. I don't think I've ever said that I'm a Halsey fan. Like, I'm a really big Halsey fan. <laughs> Hello there. I just finished the picture of Dorian Gray. Um, excuse the hat. No, actually, the hat looks great. The hair is bad, so the hat is here. Um, you can also see my lovely pink uh, leopard print pants. I am feeling <clears throat> under the weather. It's not COVID, it's all snot. <laughs> you said that in a reading vlog? Ew. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking it quite slow today. Um, I'm going to do my recipe for this week. Um, I'm still waiting on that website to publish my um, recipes. When they're published, I'm going to put them down below and then you guys can cook what I cook. Because uh, I am a qualified chef, so I am pretty good at cooking. So my, I think my recipes are good. Anyway, finish the picture, Dorian Gray. Um, there was one part, I think around chapter 11, where it was sort of like going from the present time, uh, trying to show that time had passed and all of the things that he was doing and just the way that I, that it was described, I found very, very convoluted and very long-winded. 
I really didn't think it needed to be there. There were a lot of like references to people. I presume they were famous people or people from the Bible or people from history in here. I didn't have any idea. I must admit I skimmed some of it because it was driving me nuts. But um, yeah, so the rest of it though was so, so good. It had twists in it that I didn't expect and the ending was great. The ending was absolutely like spot on perfect. And I can tell that he is a playwright because this would have made a really excellent ending to a play. <clears throat> so that ticks off the vintage um, uh, prompt for, Quillet, for the Quillet Readathon and it's a book that I've been wanting to read for a long time. Two pictures on stone. So the next one that I'm going to be picking up, I'm still listening to Halsey's poetry. It's so good, oh my word. I definitely enjoy poetry when I listen to it. Um, I say that as I'm about to go into a book written in verse. Um, but for actually like pure poetry, I um, am really enjoying having her read it and like getting all the emphasis right and everything. So I know that it's been read correctly and her voice is gorgeous. Um, Halsey does use she, they pronouns just to put that out there. Um, as I did say before that they are non-binary. Um, some of the poems are really sexual. <laughs> like, I'll listen to them and I'll be like, um, excuse me. <laughs> That was naughty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like it. I've uh, I think got about half of that left. And then I'm going to pick up The Black Women Go by Dean Atta. This gives me summer vibes and it's just something that's going to bring me joy. Because I mean, just look at the cover. This cover brings me so much joy. And it's got pictures. How can you be not happy about pictures? And as you guys know, I do love the flamenques. Um, so yeah, I am really excited to pick this one up and I will catch you up when I have done so. I just found out that Dean Atta is also gender fluid, which is pretty cool. Um, he does use he pronouns though. I, I couldn't see on his social media, but on his website it says he. But yeah, gender fluid, interesting, hey. This is so nice. This whole month, this whole week has been so nice reading so many different people from so many different parts of the, uh, what do they call it? <laughs> Alphabet Mafia. I love it. It just, it, it enriches my soul. I spent the day just chill out, maxing, and relaxing and looking like a thumb, which is what I look like now. Um, yeah, but I've been doing a lot of reading. I've been reading a lot of uh, The Black Flamingo. It's really, really good. And then I finished Halsey's poetry. Uh, I would leave me if I could. It was really, really good. I really recommend it. Her, if you like her songwriting, you'll like her poetry. Some of the poem, uh, lines of the poems I recognize from songs so I don't know which one came first but obviously it's words that resonate with her um and now I've started listening to black what sister <laughs> black something sister by Zencho it's here black water sister black water sister it's a lesbian Malaysian fantasy and uh, urban fantasy so I'm super excited um now I'm just doing some broccolini and crispy crispy fried chicken and I'm gonna do a cheese sauce to dip it in it's gonna be good hi it's Friday um I was just <laughs> I was just reading the last bits of black flamingo and um, recently I was just thinking like oh a book hasn't made me cry in a while <laughs> the last the last page made me cry but like in the nicest way like I really didn't expect to be updating in my Tom and Jerry pajamas and looking like a thumb but I, I will come back uh, later when I've put myself together a little bit more um, to finish up my thoughts on this but it's a good one
hello there, this is me from um, the day you've seen this video. <laughs> um, so I think the last clip you saw of me, I was finishing Black Flamingo and having a little bit of a cry about it. Um, that book is amazing. It's so great. <laughs> I've never read a book like it, like the illustrations, going with the formats, going with the subject matter and like the intersectionality of um, being queer and being black and being in in England, which is obviously like in a minority sort of situation there. Um, and then doing drag, oh man, and his performance, uh, so good, so good. Um, but then I had a very busy weekend with um, my girlfriend, which is cool for pride. <laughs> um, so I definitely wasn't vlogging because I was, uh, yeah, I was much distracted. So here I am signing off the vlog. This is my final, my final bingo board. You see I hit bingo there and there and then a bunch of others, which is really satisfying. I'm definitely going to do uh, the Queer Lit Readathon the next time it comes around. I've had a lot of fun. Um, I'm also going to carry on reading gaily uh, during the rest of this month. So I hope you guys will enjoy watching that as well. So please let me know if you got uh, uh, involved in the Queer Lit Readathon, as always, down below. Um, again, if you like this video, give me a like, maybe even subscribe, tickle my bell for notifications. And as always, I have my coffee account linked below if you guys want to tip me for my content. Um, but yeah, I think that is all to round up my Quillet Readathon vlog. Uh, so I will check you next week.